Hello everyone and welcome to App Advice's look at the Apple Arcade. This is your host Trevor Sheridan and let's dive in all to see what it has to offer. So as you can tell, there's a new tab right here, number 4, Arcade. So you know there's the Today tab, the Games tab, all that good stuff. But then Arcade tab. And so it shows you all the potential new games. And again, remember, Apple Arcade. It's $4.99 per month and you have access to over 100 different games and it's going to be updated as they go. And so you can also get a one month free trial. And so this is just going to be like a glance at the games that are available to kind of give you an idea of what you can potentially play. And, I mean, they have these featured sections, you know, little quick action games or little great volume games or just highlighted featured ones. But we're going to go down here to see all games. And, man, oh, man, did Apple pull no stops. I mean, geez, they spared no expense. <laughs> So we'll start off with Outlanders. The cool thing is you have the trailer playing in the background as you're checking out the details. So you have all the screenshots, but trailers right here concurrently as you're viewing everything. And then there's this cool bar right here, which shows you age rating, category, number of players, who the developer is, languages, and the actual size of the download. Because probably size is going to come into the equation. You might need bigger devices because I wouldn't have a problem downloading any and all of these games once you sign up. And so the cool thing is you get to see who made these games. And I mean, the maker of Mars Mars actually made this Outlanders game. So you get this full-on building world simulation game from an established really good developer. And then you jump over here to Hexaflip. This game is by Rogue Games, who have published a bunch of stuff. And they've had deluxe. I mean, Oz Broken Kingdom is really deluxe design, even if it has kind of cluttered with free-to-play items and then Olo game is a really fun multiplayer game so again this is just an action puzzle game about that hexagonal grid and path movements and all that good stuff and then we got Jenny LeClue which this looks outstanding just I mean if you are any kind of interested in story you're gonna be right at home with this game and it's a big it's a big boy it's a big download almost a gig and this is their first game on the App Store it's pretty impressive when you just look at all the details of these screenshots. I mean, look, this is the opening sequence. Look at the design of this. It's, it's insane. And guess what? It's part of Apple Arcade. You can just download it and start enjoying it. And then we have Spider Source. So this is a retro-inspired action platformer type of game. It looks like she's using a guitar as a gun and strumming it to blast the bullets. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> and so way forward they made all the Shantae games and there's also going to be a Shantae game available on the App Store and so again they have that retro inspired platformer style down so if that's your jam boom right here and then we got Earth Knight so this one is from a developer who's been working on this for a long time it's a pretty great story behind this one and this is all hand drawn art when you see I mean this is a whole never ending story vibe right here and so every single match is procedurally generated, so it's always going to be random. And, I mean, this game looks absolutely outstanding as you jump and dash and try to make it through these complexly, ornately designed sequences. Just the trailers of these. I mean, as soon as you see the trailers of any of these games, you're like, this is one of the best games in the App Store. And it's all just part of Apple. Okay, you don't be like, oh, is this two ninety nine or four ninety nine or nine ninety nine or is there a full unlock as I go through the game or are there in app purchases or chapter purchases or all that kind of stuff that we've had to deal with for like a decade now. And so this game, it comes from us too, you know, the makers of Monument Valley. And this is a whole really different type of game because it seems like us too is just experimenting with game design and what could potentially be viewed as a game and so it starts out this antique restore and you have all these little 3d puzzle manipulation objects kind of reminiscent of zen bound that type of idea shadowmatic and then let's see what we got there's shante that i mentioned earlier again retro arcade platformer down in bermuda let's see this game is another ornate puzzle game. It looks like path-based ideas where you create it to have the water flow and then electrical. Oh, so this is a whole puzzle sequence order of operations idea. Again, ornate graphical design to go with it to make that puzzle into more of an adventure where everything sequences together so you want to create this moving forward experience. Grindstone. Oh, this looks like a match three game. <laughs> And it's a path connecting match three game leaks link sequences. 
Oh man, it's from the makers of Sword and Sorcery. That is quite a, a pedigree. And so this is going to have a whole adventure battle basis to it to build on the idea that it's not just a match three. It uses that mechanic and then it builds it out into an actual adventure experience. 150 different levels. You got dungeon, boss battles, all that good stuff built on a familiar accessible mechanic. And then what the golf? This is a golf game made for people who are not fans of golf, where it's really crazy, goofy, chaotic, all kinds of crazy stuff happens on the course. As you can see just from the screenshot, you have computer chairs and lamps and cars, horses, all kinds of crazy stuff. So just if you like any type of just quick action arcade game, they've infused it into golf mechanics, but you don't have to be a golf fan or really like golf. Just from the trailer right here, I mean... It's based on the golf idea that you need to get into the hole, but that's about the only similarity to golf you have. <laughs> oh, the bowling one. This game looks really fun. And then what do we got? Card of Darkness. So if you like those card battler games, you're going to be right at home with this one. From Zach Gage, you know, the maker of Pocket Run Pool and Type Shift and Spell Tower and all kinds of great stuff. So now he's put his new styled Apple Arcade. Whole card battling idea. It looks like we're going to be casting spells and has a kind of solitarica vibe, it looks like. A little bit of card crawl, a little bit of Miracle Merchant, that kind of idea. So definitely interested to see that. And then Lego is coming out with a couple games. The first one is a multiplayer game. As you can see right here, players one to four. So this is going to be all battle-based where you outfit your different Lego characters. And then looks like you got a subtle little uh, Smash Brothers style. So that should definitely be fun. We'll see. Because you can personalize your own minifig. Like, look at this cactus guy. Cactus skeleton guy. And then you're going into battle. So that should be fun with the whole Lego world to defend and destroy all into brick by brick pieces. And then patterned. This just looks beautiful. I mean, there's not many other ways to put this. Border Leap has made some great games. Alpha Omega, you got to give a shout out to. Harmony Series, Anti-Type. A lot of minimalistic puzzle games, and this fits in that vibe with kind of like almost a jigsaw puzzle idea, but with really different shape types and pieces to put together. But it's trying to figure out the patterns of not necessarily obvious pictures that go together. You know, they're more ornate. You can see all the different potential pieces you're going to put together. That's definitely one to be excited about. Stellar Commander. So... It wouldn't be an Apple subscription service without a real-time strategy game. And this is just that classic idea. You know, all these descriptions, it starts with a game subscription. It talks about Apple Arcade. They could cut that line. I mean, you're in Apple Arcade. You got it. This is from the makers of Cloud Chasers. Yep, that fits. <laughs> Cloud Chasers are really good. You know, a lot of these, hopefully you discover developers just through Apple Arcade because... Apple's worked with some great developers out there and kind of back catalog interest of what they've made in the past as you just discover it through Apple Arcade. This is a pretty deluxe real-time strategy game right here. So if you like any of that type of uh, sending units into battle and trying to get the advantage of your opponent. Where Cards Fall. So this comes from the makers of Alto's Odyssey. It's a completely different gaming experience, but it has that pedigree of polish and... The trailers of this game look absolutely stunning, where it's all kind of gameplay that might not be the most complex you're going to come across, but story-driven. This is ultimate. If you like any kind of narrative in your TV shows or movies, they've now put it into game form and really just ornate, because you're going to use the cards to kind of assemble the world, create pathways for your characters, all that good stuff, but it's really of developing these characters you know you're you're proceeding them forward to then learn more about them and snowman has another game we'll get to it eventually i'm sure and so this is a survival adventure game called overland they've made feist oh man this is uh okay so they're more publishers but still this is a good pedigree right here as well and so if you liked kind of like zombie road trip or uh any of those type of games. I mean, even Oregon Trail just modernized with the whole survival 3D design and interacting with various stops and getting your supplies and being able to survive with a crew that has all kinds of various problems facing them. Overland is right up your alley. Then we got Exit the Gungeon. 
10 minutes. Good. I needed to take a breath. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> 10 minute cut. Crash. Can I have a water in here? I do. I do. Okay. Let's open it back up. Da -da 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 -da. And so now we have Exit the Gungeon, which is retro arcade classic game. It's essentially going to be all kinds of bullet hell action. You're going to be descending through these dungeons and facing waves of crazy, crazy enemies. They've So, Devolver Digital has published a lot of games. They are best known for Reigns, but they also publish Downwell, and this has a total Downwell vibe, where you're going to descend wave by wave dungeon, but with a greater level of polish, greater level of variety in the enemies that you're going to face and the weapons at your disposal. So, retro arcade action. Rayman, so, again, platformers. There's been quite a few Rayman games on the App Store, Ubisoft's done a good job. Raymond Adventures was the most recent. That has a lot of kind of in-app purchases and eggs and timers and stuff like this. So this is a full game. It essentially, he's been micro-sized and dealing with a world where everything is large in scope. But the classic Rayman is full on display. So are you a fan of platformers right there? Spaceland. So this is a tactical strategy game. So we showed you real-time strategy. This is more move my, by move, get your players in the right position to then take out different enemies. This is more methodical approach to taking out enemies. And this looks really ornate and deluxe. It comes from the makers of Brave Land. <laughs> Seriously, man, every single developer it has just an amazing pedigree of these games. So Brave Land is a really good turn-based strategy game so Spaceland is going to fit in that vibe different sci-fi kind of vibe theme Agent Intercept so this looks pretty damn awesome it comes from Pickpock they made Into the Dead Slam Dunk King way back they're known for the flick golf games and all those different variations and so this is a whole kind of like getaway style action game yes and so there's going to be more driving stunts so it's kind of like uh Stunt driving breakout style missions where it's specific. It's probably going to be swipe controls to pull off different moves. And just great 3D design. So as you can see in the trailer to the left. Oh, and then you're going to pull off actually being like a James Bond type. The boat transformation. This looks really fun. I, I don't know how I'm going to pick which game to start with first. Seriously. Punch Planet. So fun sci-fi fighter. Let's see what this has in store. Okay, let's see if we know who this is from. I do not know this developer. Hmm. Interesting. Well, this looks really good. Looks like they're developing. It kind of has that vibe of just a classic combat. You're all in the same, you know, Street Fighter, that kind of stuff. But with all new characters, all new combat actions. This is a big game, 2.2 gigs. So if you are a fan of Mortal Kombat or Street Fighter, you're going to be right at home right here. And then Sneaky Sasquatch. So this should be a type of a stealth game, but with a Bigfoot. You're going to go steal people's picnic items. I mean, there's a reason Sasquatch or Bigfoot's never been seen, right? It's because he's sneaky. Oh my God, look at that. This game already looks awesome where Bigfoot's stealing a golf cart and the forest guy's chasing after him. I'm all in... So this is from the makers of Splitter Critters. Splitter Critters is absolutely amazing. It uh, lets you change the environment to piece the world together for characters to move forward. Dark Echo is also really innovative of using tap to create sound waves to see where the walls and enemies are in an environment to help you move forward. So Sneaky Sasquatch, definite right on. Set in the 1990s, you know, not many things are said in the 90s. 80s is super hot right now, but 90s definitely not exactly the environment for ideas. So this is a card battle game. As you can see, going to have that Pokemon type of vibe or even Hearthstone or any of that card battling games that you become familiar with. This looks more deck building than that. So, yep, you're building your decks, all that good stuff. 
all championship challenges of this has a very heavy hearthstone vibe <laughs> but all new cast of characters all new challenge potentials and again like i said said in the 90s and versus evil they've been a publisher but anti-hero really fun digital board game let them come intense action where waves of enemies are coming at you you're in a fixed position you have to blast them all away like a boss switches up the dungeon crawler so you actually play as the boss going against all kinds of waves of heroes just fun ideas that they've found to publish so they have a good eye for games operator 41 looks pretty fun again stealth idea right off the top it has a nice 3d polygon design style and just classic stealth games. So it looked like Sneaky Sasquatch is more kind of arcade action-y. This is traditional stealth where you need to get in the right position. A little bit of Hitman Go vibe going on. And let's see. They This is their first game for iOS. Definite big starter. Operator 41. I mean, do you just add all over 100 games to your wish list and go for the best. So Frogger and Toy Town, you know Frogger, Apple showed it during their demo. It's new 3D rendered, new worlds, all that good stuff. Red Rain looks like it is... Is it a tower defense game or is it just strategy? It looks more like tower defense. It looks more like Kingdom Rush. Yeah, it's from the makers of Balloons TD. So I'm guessing this is more on to the tower defense idea. And you need a tower defense game if you're going to have a subscription service. You got to cover all the genres you can. So if you're a fan of those balloons, TD. So this looks more, though, like a full-on real-time strategy than tower defense, where you're sending out both enemies are sending waves together. So there's multiplayer, and you try to outlast your opponent, get the waves in the right time. It's kind of like if you've played Clash Royale, where that's super simple, think of it more as open, more open world, more expansive environments to play that style. And then let's see what we got. Various Day Life. So this is the deluxe RPG from Square Enix, right? Yeah. So Square Enix, if you like any kind of Final, Final Fantasy games, here's a brand new adventure RPG adventure for you to try out. You get your whole squad, your whole story development. So this is an interesting design where it's, you know, a lot of Square Enix games have been experimenting of how to do their in-app purchases and not have many have been the best. So just to see a full game that they developed with iOS in mind is definitely nice to see. Day and night adventures with the whole night day cycle. This is going to be a really, really deluxe game. It doesn't say how many different hours, but I'm sure it's dozens. And then we got mini motorways. I wonder if this is from the makers of mini Metro. It is. Okay. So Mini Metro is my game of the year for whatever year it came out, 2016, 2017. And that is an absolutely awesome time management game where you have to deal with all kinds of sequences of putting the railways to the right destinations. And this expands that out to cars rather than trains. And cars, as you can tell, have more potential for damage and overlap because trains are going to stay on their tracks. Cars you know people can't drive, so naturally they're more prone to smash into one another. And roads overlap, and there's stops that might be missed, and new road avenues you can build off. This, I'm all in for. <laughs> Seriously, look how complex these maps become as you go. Oh yeah. More mini metro is never a bad thing. Don't bug me. Let's see how we got this one. Okay. Who's this from? So Frosty Pop, again, they're more of a minimalistic kind of action arcade designer. So this looks like you're in a set spot and you need to defend your base through waves of different enemies as they come. So the bugs are going to come keep attacking you. Okay. Yeah, Frosty Pop has really done a good job of getting quick access, quick arcade games that get your name known out there. So a little shooting mechanic as well. But again, you have that 360 degree defense style. Oceanhorn 2, so to be honest, we're, we're quite a way through these games. This is my number one download. This should be everyone's number one download. Oceanhorn 1 was game of the year for me back in the year that it came out, I think 2014, 15, one of those years, and it was absolutely amazing for the year. And just think, it's five years down the road, and the detail that they can put on iOS devices now and the game engines that it's capable of running and the more complex gameplay mechanics that you can build out, because you still have that core concept of a 3d zelda game the original is more kind of like 
cutesy characters. This is going more into that realistic design. You're fully fleshing out the main character and the environments and the worlds. Really, really excited for this one. I mean, if you want any kind of Zelda adventure, you've ever liked that, Ocean Ocean Toy should be one of your first downloads. <laughs> King's League 2. Oh, okay. This is more battle arena battle games where you're going to build up your units and put them into the best potential spots to win from the makers of King's League Odyssey. So it's kind of building on that idea that you have that existing fan base. This is more like the one we just showed you, Red Rain, where you set out your units and you're going to try to take out your opponent, put in you know your archers and your mage and your soldiers in the right right order to have the defense lines and the attack lines in the proper positions explodens guessing this is kitten based <laughs> who's this from okay dream chaser is pretty ornate actually lost twins is a really fun game too so they have a nice pedigree of published games and this is just an over the top bullet hell shooter type of game you're gonna have kittens flying planes for a cute factor and then tied into intense over-the-top action of shooters so if you like that bullet hell shooter type of game got you covered and so then there's spell drifter so this you've probably seen before it's the grid based combat hero academy on ios probably the most well known of this style where you get your players into position you have the turn-based strategy and try to take out all the enemy units each one of your characters has different abilities and styles to change their tactics of getting into position and taking out the enemies so tactical strategy right there the get out kids right at first glance love the icon with the dog love the design of the worlds the 3d ideas and then frosty pop again and so i'm guessing it's kind of like a haunted house escape type of experience let's see so we got a whole puzzle adventure yeah, so this is going to be more kind of like 3D point-and-click adventure. You interact with the environment, you pick up items, you use those items together to help clear the path forward and get through various ideas. So if you kind of like that experience, you're right at home. And then they actually expand it out for more interactive abilities. Really great design as well. This is one to keep an eye out for. Then we got Spec. I believe this is from the makers of Black. No. Interesting. This is from Dark... Okay, see, okay. Hmm. Let's see how this game is played. So this is more accessible puzzle game. I'm impressed that Rack 7 has two games available for Apple Arcade at launch. And so this is more of different type of puzzles. Each puzzle has a different design, and you have to get the different shapes on the proper pathways and link them up together. As you can see, they become more and more complex. You have the circle and the square in each of them, and they're moving at different paces. Okay, so the circle has to get rid of the squares while following on an existing line. That's a nice idea, nice fun challenge. Then we got Way of the Turtle. This is the Illusion Labs game. You know the makers of Touch Grind and Labyrinth and Mr. Crab. Going way back, they made that first Labyrinth game back on the App Store, and they just have a great pedigree on the App Store. Sway, another classic right there. And so this is just looks like a platformer adventure game, reminiscent of the classic Mario ideas. And so with Mr. Crab, it's a fixed point platformer where you just have to tap to jump. And it's more on rails, I guess. And this one actually looks more on rails than I expected. So they've taken that idea where it's just tap to jump and they've made it more complex environments because they also did Pig Escape in that same vibe. So they're building on that idea. Very accessible platformer style. Illusion Labs just knows how to make good games. Then we have Life Slide, which looks like a paper airplane flying experience. Oh, Punch Planet. So they have two games available at launch, and they've never had an iOS game before. They're all in on Apple Arcade. This, So if you like that 3D deluxe flying experience, they've made it as accessible as possible by giving you that paper airplane. But then they go to more expansive, complex worlds. And some of the paper airplane games on iOS are 
really fun experiences. So building that out to more ornate worlds and challenges of flying sequences, definitely worth checking out. Neocab. Right here. Love this design. I know this is going to be a narrative-based game that's heavy on dialogue choices. Just from the design, let's see if I'm right. Yep, meet people, learn their stories, stay human. You can tell kind of pretty well. That's really impressive visual design style. I mean, this looks like any game you would see on Xbox Arcade or Steam or something. Really deluxe offerings. And really interesting dialogue choices, that whole Telltale style, but more ornate visual style. And think of all the people and story interactions you could potentially have on a cab because you can meet anyone. And then we have a whole futuristic idea to it as well. Really, I've never heard of this game and I'm super excited for it. Seems to be kind of a trend I'm seeing. Let's see, Skate City. So I actually heard of this one. This comes also from the makers of Alto's Odyssey. So they're going to have two Apple Arcade titles right at launch with Rare Cards Fall and Skate City. And so this is the full-on simulation skating game. We have True Skate and Touch Grind available on iOS. And both of those just show you the board. And you kind of have that tech deck style where you put your fingers on screen and move, do the move. So this is more of that Tony Hawk Pro Skater vibe where you have the 3D perspective of your skater. But I'm sure that they're still going to use touch controls for all of the various moves like grinds and ollies and various tricks you can pull off. And just ornate deluxe 3D physics engine of these skaters. I have to be excited for that one. Tint. Let's check this out. So we're opening a narrative book. I'm already excited. Looks like we have some watercolor paintings. Is this path connecting puzzle game? Where you have to put the sequences together. Orange to orange, yellow to yellow, purple to purple. And then merge colors as you go because blue goes through yellow and it becomes green. Excited for these type of puzzle games where it's color, path connecting, overlap. We've seen a few of these on the App Store. But to just do it with Amon's a really good game, by the way. If you have a AR kind of idea, that's one of the better ones. Really excited for Tint, though. Just fun game to dive yourself into just playing a, a puzzle game. You know, sit back, relax, contemplate, and get lost and going page by page to this watercolor book. Really neat idea. Then we got The Enchanted World. I believe this is published by Noodle Cake. You know, the makers of Super Stickman Golf. And they've published a lot of really good games. I'm pretty sure they're publishing this one. And this is another path-connecting puzzle game where you have to have the whole magical world and you get the flow of energy from one area to the other by forming these paths and creating the network connecting. You have block switch. So it's a block slide and puzzle game with the whole magical energy. Neat idea. Accessible concept world building design beyond that to make it engaging good idea then we have over the alps loving this design style right at the top of the screen with this trailer so again if you probably noticed narrative games are the ones that really get to me that's just kind of my vibe i guess i'm an old person now that that's what i'll go with the whole story driven ideas but just love I guess it's more of the pop culture love in movies and TV and making it into game form where you have these playable narratives. It's just fun. This is their first game on the App Store. And I wonder if we have a whole Murder on the Orient Express idea. So we have secret history. So we've got mysteries, a reactive branching narrative filled with action, adventure, and nostalgia. Really, really liking this game. Love with those surprise games where you haven't even heard of it and damn, it looks amazing. The whole 30s vibe is cool too. Hot Lava. So this one has been advertised quite a bit. And how do you not like Floors Lava made into a 3D game that's also multiplayer based so you can compete and you're hopping between different areas. I mean, even that Floors Lava mode in Fortnite is pretty damn fun. And to make it a whole multiplayer player game where that's all you have to do is jump between these sequences and you see the ever rising lava in various different environments like you have the home you have the school and you just build it out that way really great design and so this comes from clay entertainment and they're best known for their don't starve games and this is quite a transition to go with that you know more 
focused on the gameplay survival adventure and the 2D design style versus this really ornate 3D design style that isn't as deluxe on strategy and instead just that quick action react and deal with adventure through these different environments. And the multiplayer aspect can't be understated as well. And then Pinball Wizard. I love combining pinball mechanic with adventure RPG, any kind of building it on that pinball mechanic because pinball is oh frosty pop this is their third game they're nailing this apple arcade launch pinball is super accessible you tap left to right to interact with the flippers and you knock the ball into the table to make those tables into worlds to have you focus i need this shot to hit this enemy or collect this chest or build out my quests it just gives you more to the pinball mechanics and ideas and wanting to keep playing it because just having oh i have three balls i'm trying to get you know millions of points and that that's fun that will always be fun but to build it out into a world and levels and going to new regions you know open up the doors and go into new areas that's always going to be intriguing so that's pinball wizard and then shin sky into the depths was showed at the apple event from capcom this is an underwater adventure that's going to focus on all kinds of crazy discoveries as you can see, crazy creatures that you're going to have to deal with, interact with. So Capcom's on board as well with Apple Arcade. This really looks ornately designed. And interested to see how many challenges arise. Because a lot of these underwater games, they kind of get bogged down in... You get mundane traveling between areas to get to the next action sequences like hungry sharks does it well because it seems like there's always something to do because you have to keep your shark fed and a lot of these other underwater games they focus so much on environment and world building that there's a lot of just transportation where nothing happens so hopefully they can balance that pretty well but absolutely beautiful game and you will get lost in the environment design so maybe it won't be as boring so word laces you couldn't have a launch service without a word based game and so it looks like we're gonna tie and lace up different word sequence or letter sequences to create full-on words so it's more of the combination yep i knew it was going to be from bonza and just that was easy they love the whole puzzle sequence of combining little bits to create greater words and combining the picture idea with the words that you're trying to discover so the hint is the picture and trying to tie it all together and i like the idea of linking it together with the shoelaces. So, word laces, fun little word game. And so, dear reader, looks like we're continuing the word game idea. This one has a lot going on. Let's see if I can figure out. So, we have Moby Dick, we got. So, it looks like we have classic stories. And then we're going to turn word games out of them. So, this is actually Alice in Wonderland. And we're taking the actual text and then we're going to tie word games into it. That's pretty amazing this is because this is all uh open source at this point because these games are all public domain or these words are or the books are public domain to make for a really interesting puzzle experience where you're unscrambling passages from famous books the more well you know alice in wonderland or pride and prejudice and moby dick the more accessible this is going to be and more kind of introducing you to those books if you haven't read them so projection first light it comes from Blowfish Studios, which they've been partnering a lot with Crescent Moon Games recently. But they do a lot of kind of classic, I think their best known one is the Tower Defense and Strategy Castle Defense games they've made in the past. And so this is a whole kind of like Limbo or Feist or Green Game Without a Good Name, that kind of idea of where you have the black silhouetted character going through puzzle adventure sequences you know classic pl puzzle platformer and then we're going to use light based action so a little shadow matic and putting this ball of light in the right position to cast the proper shadows to create platforms for your character to jump on definitely intriguing I, I love manipulating light to create pathways forward and then we have a tone heart of the elder tree and this game has a great design so i talked about super brothers sword and sorcery earlier they have a different game but this has a whole vibe of them. This also, if you played Gris, that came out a couple of weeks ago, has a similar design vibe. And so you have this ornate design to introduce you into the world and keep you intrigued or start you to be intrigued. And then you have the whole adventure experience and go through these different ornate pathways and sequences through this world that's been designed. 
definite one to keep on your radar. And it's Norse mythology to deal with too as you're going through on your adventure. So if you're a adventure game fan and you don't want more of the 3D adventure of Oceanorn, you want more of a 2D style, this is definitely one to keep an eye on. Big time sports. Let's see what we're talking. I'm guessing these are going to be mini game based. Just because we're so kind of like a warrior wear style with sports or dumb ways to die, you know, with sports, you're going to have various taps and swipes to get these characters to do their best possible sporting events, whether it's skateboard tricks or basketball dunks or soccer goals or weightlifting, all of it. Because you can see the timers on here. So that we got four seconds and then you have seven seconds. So these are all going to be kind of quick action, rapid pace, variety of sports. Definite if you like those quick action games I mentioned. Tangle Tower. So this has a really fun cartoon art style. And we have a murder mystery adventure. Well, so, you know, we had uh, Jenny LeClue. So this comes from the makers of Detective Grimoire. So it's going to have that similar vice. Also, Haunt the House Terror Town with Halloween coming out. Check that game out. It's really fun where you have to inhabit inanimate objects to kind of scare people and your goal ultimately is to scare everyone in given locations perfect for halloween and so this is more definite detective grimoire vibe i guess it's kind of a pseudo sequel it's in the same universe since we have him right here and so it builds on that idea of the point and click adventure you're going to find objects in the environment and then there's going to be puzzles kind of detective laden as well if you like that game all that similar familiar styles and guess what's available on apple arcade and then dread nautical this comes from the makers of Zen Pinball and all the various Zen Pinball games. I got to actually see this game at E3. And it's a really fun kind of tactical strategy game where you have a possessed ship and you're the captain or one of the last crew members and you have to, you know, move into position, get the right drop on these various infected enemies and try to defeat them all to make it your way off the ship. And then there's going to be multiple playable characters and a whole little narrative. So four different characters to choose. And then you're going to have to find survivors along the way and gain their trust. And all built on that strategy mechanic of positioning your characters in the right spot to take out the enemies. How do you not like Zen Studios? So then we have Mutazion. I guess it's a mutant soap, soap opera. So maybe it's a telenovela, actually. And so you have this whole kind of abandoned world in disrepair mutants obviously and whoever this is you can see the kind of cast of characters in the audience i mean this one guy looks like a possum <laughs> and then looks like the main character is talking to an elk deer type of character and then you're on a little jungle cruise boat up in the tree so this is a fun narrative adventure again these are really being standouts in apple arcade so far just a really ornate design style all different. You know, there's the 2D design style, there's the 3D, there's variations of 3D and 2D and what you're going to focus on in your design. But all of them are instantly recognizable and stand out. And then you get to dive into the adventures that they have to offer. And then we have Bleak Sword. So this is more of the retro arcade inspired style. It's published by Devolver Digital. We talked about them earlier with Reigns and Downwell. And let's see, for this game... It actually has that downwell vibe as well. Just more. So this is going to be adventure based on that whole design style. So really retro inspired. I mean, this is kind of like almost <laughs> one bit, two bit, less than eight bit design, but it's still a fluid action RPG. So if you're so there's the RPGs where it's the turn based and it's more of the methodical. You encounter enemy, you go to attack to turn based battles. This is action RPG where everything is challenged right in the environment itself. You don't go to those turn based battles. You need to just defeat everything. And then to go with the super retro style Ford, it's an interesting design decision and it makes it instantly appealing. So that's Bleak Sword. And then we have Sinar Wild Hearts. This game has been talked about a bunch, and rightfully so. You have an awesome soundtrack that is then comes from Samogo, the makers of Device 6, and, you know, A Sailor's Dream, and Beat Sneak Bandit, and all kinds of fun games. And then they're working with Annapurna, who's gone and released Goragoa, and Donut County, and Florence, and Telling Lies, and 
Journey and Gone Home, a lot of great games for iOS. They've been publishing great games. They have an eye for great games. And now they're working with Samogo to make this rhythm-based challenge game where every single track is its own level. And it's tied to almost where you're playing through a music video with this 3D ornate neon Technicolor art style. Really excited to play this one. Seriously. Definite standout. And that's without even really hearing any of the music so far, just from the design style, the gameplay, and the pedigree. So Sayonara Wild Hearts, and then Dead End Job. Let's see what we got here. So this is the makers of Bridge Constructor, Highlight Bridge Constructor Portal combination, and that was a really good game. And so now they've gone in different style completely. This looks more like a classic iOS game like a dual stick shooter where you're going to go interact with these different environments and you have this whole Ghostbusters vibe going on really fun cartoon art style and you're going to go from level to level you got to take out all the enemies I'm sure it's not dual stick shooter but it has that vibe going on just fun quick action shooter game where you're going to be cleaning up ghosts what's not to like there so that's dead end job cat quest 2 so I've talked about a lot of games that were Game of the Years for the respective years. Cat Quest 1 was Game of the Year a couple years ago. Now we have a sequel available on Apple Arcade. And if you've never played Cat Quest, go play the original. Get ready to play it on Apple Arcade because it's absolutely amazing. The biggest highlight is that you have the world itself. It's the map. The map is completely playable. It's not like, oh, I'm zoomed in and I'm going through the forest. And let me check the map to see where I go. The map is fully playable. You have the written city names as you go. You go across the different open areas and then you get to various cities. And it looks like the sequel, you have a new companion and you're going to have new magical abilities and new weapon types. But really, Cat Quest has a ton of personality for the story itself. And it's more of that action RPG style that I was mentioning where it's open world. You interact and fight with enemies right on the map, right in the world itself. And there's constant flow of upgrades to then be able to access new, more challenging areas. And it's a really great difficulty curve where you're always consistently challenged. It's never too easy. It's never too hard. It's just balanced. You get those upgrades at a proper pace. Definitely check out Cat Quest 2. And Dodo Peak. So I believe this is their first game for iOS. And this is a classic platformer. And you get to play with Dodos. And he picks them up. And it's turn-based, so every time you make a move, the enemies make a move. Oh, God, this looks good. Oh, and the dodo gets bigger as he crushes them, and he has to pick up all his eggs, and then they trail after, and you might lose them based on what enemies interact with you. And all of them are step-based, so you're going to have very similar design sequences, but they become more complex. And look, you can customize your dodo. as a rock star, or his mountain climber outfits, even sunglasses, got his little inner tube. And just classic, fun, retro-inspired pl arcade platforming. Everything is super fast-paced, motion-based, and you get to play with Dodos who are extinct. But they're so cute and creative and personalized with your different accessible unlocks. So that's Dodo Peak. And then we have Cricket Through the Ages, which this right at first glance looks like a Colin Lane game. You know, like uh, soccer physics and wrestling physics and all their fun little goofy games. And now you have the idea of playing cricket, and you have medieval times, caveman times, samurai swords, futuristic, space, all kinds of fun stuff. You have T-Rex coming out, and it's developed, or it's published by Devolver, so maybe it is a call and lane game. And just quick action fun, where it's just goofy, you're never really in control, and part of the challenge and part of the fun is dealing with the goofy controls and the goofy way your characters move and interact with one another as you try to get the ball on their side and they try to get the ball into yours. Though I have to admit, I would go with the T-Rex as often as I could. It's got to help. <laughs> so that's Cricket Through the Ages. Fun, goofy, sports fun. I said fun twice. And then there's Speed Demons. So we did need a racing game available on the platform. And with Speed Demons, it comes from Radiant Games. Hopefully you've played one of their games like Inferno or Supercross Fighter or one of those classic retro arcade shooters. This goes away from that usual style they've had. And it looks like it's more kind of like Reckless Getaway, which Reckless Getaway is absolutely amazing. <laughs> Especially the first one. 
Actually, the second one's awesome. It's a different style. This calls back more to the first with the top-down, on-the-lane style, and that's exactly what this game is, but with Radiant Games' neon graphical art style. All in for this. I love Reckless Giveaway. I love getting trying to get away from the cops, and it's kind of like Paco 2. Any of those ideas, you're smashed into the cops, and really fun speed demons. And that's all that's going to be available. So this is iOS 13 beta. This is showing everything that's available on Apple Arcade for launch day. And then, of course, games are going to be coming and updated as you go. Again, there's a one-month free trial. You can dive into any of the games that I've mentioned for a month. And then it's only $5 a month to play and just keep playing these games. And you have all these potential different styles. I mentioned so many different ways to play all these different games that you can dive into. We hope you do sign up, and we hope you enjoyed App Advice's look at Apple Arcade and are excited for the launch on this Thursday on iPhone, and then it's coming to iPad and Apple TV on September 30th, and then in October it's coming to the Mac. And reminder that with iOS 13, you'll have access to PlayStation or Xbox controllers for connecting to your iOS or Apple TV, and that way you can play a lot of these games. If you're worried about touch controls on any of these games, you can use your Xbox or PlayStation controller, and they're just amazing games. Give Apple Arcade a try. You have no reason not to. You will absolutely love it. Keep in mind that if you do sign up, you're probably going to end up paying $5 a month, but again, over 12 months, that's only 60 bucks. That's one console game. Look at all these games, plus all the games that are potentially going to launch in the future. Apple's working with the best developers out there, and... We'll talk to you next time.